Well, um, continuing our homily series on the liturgy here, last time we talked about incense and some of the theology of incense, how it is used as a sign of worship and a sign of honor uh, within the liturgy. So to just finish that up, I wanted to run through when we use incense in the liturgy and how it is used, um, and then have a little introduction to talking about the liturgy of the Eucharist. So, when do we use incense in the liturgy? We use it at the beginning of Mass to incense the altar, the crucifix, uh, because these things are symbols of Christ and we show them honor. Also, during the Easter season, we incense the Easter candle because it is also a symbol of Christ. Then, again, we use incense at the time for the proclamation of the Gospel. We incense the Book of the Gospels, which is or it's also a symbol of Christ, containing the very words of Christ. Uh, then we use incense again at the preparation of the gifts, the offertory, and there the priest incenses the bread and the wine, which will become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And then again he incenses the altar, and the crucifix, and the Easter candle, these kinds of things. But then also the deacon, or one of the ministers, will incense the priest and the congregation. And again, all of this is because these things are symbols of Christ. The priest is a symbol of Christ. The congregation is a symbol of Christ. So all of these uh, things were incense for that reason. And then finally, at the during the Eucharistic prayer, at the consecration, the elevation of the host to the chalice, uh, that also can be a time when incense is used to again show our worship to God. This again, this idea of our prayers ascending like incense before God. And then uh, finally, occasionally there are other liturgies where we use incense. For example, at funerals, we incense uh, the bodies of deceased Christians because they have been consecrated to God through their baptism. Or you may remember if you were at Father Kevin's installation mass, they go around and incense like the baptismal font, the confessionals, all the furniture up here, the tabernacle, because those are all things that are consecrated to God and, and used in worship. So that is, that is when we use incense in the liturgy. But also, the way, it's, it's good to understand the way in which the priest incenses things, because that has a meaning. You know, besides when you're incensing the altar, or like the casket at a funeral, where you just kind of go around and swing it a bunch of times, usually there's a certain pattern to the way in which the priest swings the thurible, that's the technical name for the censer, uh, and it's good to understand that. Now, it's no longer strictly regulated used to be very regulated in the old liturgy, but after the reforms of the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, it's not as strictly regulated, so not everyone does this. But this is the kind of traditional meaning of what happens. There are different sets of swings which show a kind of different level of honor to different things in the liturgy. So first off, if you're incensing like relics or just an image or statue of the saints or Mary or something like that, it receives two sets of two, as we say, which means you go one, two, one, two, like that. That's what we call a set of two. So that's what relics and images get. Everything else gets some form of a set of three, which is, of course, a Trinitarian reference, since all honorableness comes ultimately from the Trinity. So the congregation, according to the traditional way of incensing, receives three sets of one. One, one, one. Now, this has sometimes become a contentious issue nowadays because people look at it as kind of a slight because the priest gets three or two set, three sets of two. So it's like, well, why doesn't the congregation? But it, the idea was never for it to be a slight. In the old liturgy, it was simply a recognition that really uh, there were incensing the priest and the congregation for different reasons. Even the current general instruction of the Roman Missal says that the priest is incensed because of his sacred ministry, whereas the people are incensed because of their baptismal dignity. So there are different reasons. And the old way is simply a way of showing that the, the people are not consecrated to God in the same way as the priest, even in a way as like the crucifix and things like that, which are set apart solely for the worship of God. But it doesn't, because you know that's one of the means of holy, is for something to be set apart. But it certainly is not a, meant to say that the people are not called to holiness. And so a lot of priests do nowadays 
um, incense the congregation with three sets of two, just as you would the priest, just as you would the uh, crucifix, the Easter candle, because all of us are called to that kind of universal holiness in the moral sense. We all must live a holy life. And so uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're incensed with three sets of one or three sets of two. What you should be reminded of when the priest or, or the deacon incenses the congregation is that you are also called to holiness by your baptismal dignity. So the priest and everything else more or less gets incensed with three sets of two, and then the Blessed Sacrament alone gets incensed with three sets of three, which is we do at the elevations or like during exposition when our Lord is in the monstrance. So that's the whole rationale behind incense, why we use it, when we use it. Um, I hope that will help people enter into that a little bit more. We're going to begin talking about the liturgy of the Eucharist and future homilies. So I just want to introduce that by saying the liturgy of the Eucharist is really the center of Mass. It is the, the most important part. You know, the liturgy of the Word is very important. It is so important, in fact, that for a Mass of obligation, like a Sunday Mass or a Holy Day of obligation, you have to be here, at least by the Gospel, the proclamation of the Gospel, for it to count as towards that obligation. But, even though it is so important, Christ's Word is present, and uh, we know we do talk about how we are fed from these two tables, the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist. Um, nonetheless, the liturgy of the Eucharist is more important, and the liturgy of the Word really is a preparation for the liturgy of the Eucharist, because Jesus Christ in the liturgy of the Eucharist becomes present to us not simply in a spiritual manner, but really, truly, and substantially, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Blessed Sacrament. And we can go through those terms and pick them apart at a later date. But just to say, the Liturgy of the Eucharist is central. And the overarching structure of the Liturgy of the Eucharist is actually modeled directly on what Jesus does at the Last Supper. You know, the Gospel recounts, at the Last Supper, Jesus took bread. Then he gave thanks. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And that is what we see in the kind of overall structure. First, we have the preparation of the gifts, or the offertory, where we take bread and wine. They are brought forward, taken by the priest, placed on the altar. Then we have the Eucharistic prayer, where we give thanks, like Jesus Christ did. You know, the Greek word Eucharist means thanksgiving. Then we have the fraction of the host and the distribution of Holy Communion, where, like Christ himself, we take the bread, now become his body, and break it, and give it to the disciples of Christ. And so, realize that that is the whole pattern of the liturgy of the Eucharist, and let us prepare ourselves to enter into that great mystery now.